this uh, quick tutorial, I wanted to give some ideas on how to create the elevation map for something like this, for some sort of a canyon wasteland or, uh, I don't know, something that, that might uh, evoke some scenes of Grand Canyon or Canyon Lands or, or Bryce Canyon. Not in all every detail, but in some ways, in a couple of ways. And so one thing I noticed, um, this this type of elevation map is really uh, what we want to get to. And so let me let me just explain how I did that. Let me first uh, free the animation and get back to a starter. So the starter will be something like a, a plain white. And um, what we'd like to do is uh, have kind of uh, cut a, uh, a path for the canyon to go from left to right. And uh, one thing I, I like to explore is just to try some of the brushes. You go to the browse media here, click this, and uh, perhaps uh, tack it down if you want to experiment with a few brushes, because otherwise the moment you, you uh, take one, uh, this thing will go away, right? Let me just demonstrate it. Let's say if, if I take this brush here, click that, the moment I take it, the uh, browse media goes away. So I'm gonna keep it there and tack it down and experiment with some of these. So let's try, for instance, this one up here, the grime burn zone. Uh, that one actually will probably work pretty nicely. Um, let's see some other, in fact, uh, I need to keep my erase options here. All right, so we can use the left button to perhaps paint uh, a path of uh, the canyon and uh, perhaps we need a little bit more windiness to it so let's do sort of a general path something like this one thing you want to try is to have the right side maybe here in the middle line up with the left side as well so that uh, it can be a, a tiling texture that that will show a path or like canyon that endlessly uh, continues and uh, perhaps use the right button to bring back some areas uh, at higher elevation and then also have some sort of a, a side canyon a little breach you know little rivers or something like that um, you might also want to change to a different brush uh, there are plenty to choose from here something like this um, that will add you know the top here the white part is going to be the high elevation and that will add uh, a little bit of additional disturbance or, or disruptions here on the plateau if we have the camera go up there. Uh, but more importantly, we can also add it here on top. So when you think about that, this is kind of a, a good starting point for a canyon. We might need to make it seamless so that there is really a nice transition from left to right, but we might also just not, you know, let's just, let's, let's see what we have here. Um, one thing I, I recommend is to often go to the image and store this image. Um, it might go over the last time you stored it. So, you know, keep in mind, you still have another one underneath it here. And what you do then, you can go directly to the filter transform and do a puppy ray. Uh, if you have the GPU enabled, you can use that and do a puppy ray rendering and see what it gets you. Now, in my case, I actually have a color map also still in the background. Uh, so in, in, the, in the black, uh, in the, uh, the back channel or the swap buffer. So you might uh, actually see something a little bit more like this. Let me go back, click this. Let's go and swap the, uh, yeah, see, I still have the, the color map from the prior exercise. That was this one here when I was experimenting before finishing it with the animation. So um, let's, let's erase this. That's the swap buffer. Let's go back to just plain white and swap back to the main to see the main buffer. And in the main image, we now have just the elevation map and underneath it, there is no coloring yet. And so that's what we start with when we look at uh, transform a uh, puppy ray and I'm gonna use the GPU version. And so now here we can go and explore. There is a, a different sky by default. It's the blue one. Um, you might want to uh, perhaps uh, not have that much elevation. Uh, click on the more and then reduce the scale or increase the scale. Um, <coughs> there is uh, a couple of other things you can do, uh, such as uh, move the light source around, uh, have it perhaps lower longer shadows and especially move the position of the light source so that the shadows will reveal some of the um the the, the fine texture um, the structure of the terrain there's also the elevation map i have it already enabled by default you will probably see it like this without the shadows 
uh, without the the area in the shadows visible it's pretty dark there uh, you can make the shadows actually semi-transparent or like uh, change the color so it's not totally black maybe give it a kind of a dark gray that will also reveal some of the details here but of course the even better way to do it is with the global illumination enable that you might want to change the sur uh, the color of the light source if the sun is a red sun give it a reddish color or tint of some sort and um, let's see what else I mean there's a uh, couple of you know do a, a final render test here and um, there you go so that's that will be one way to to create some of these terrains that look a bit like uh, eroded carvings through a high plateau uh, you want to work also with the shadow uh, with the distance of the fog um, let's go actually fly into it let's go and create an animation and uh, create something like this and we'll do a short one here just 200 frames and there we go and so <clears throat> now at this point i'll need to go into you know what I, uh, I want to do is kind of be on the edge somewhere out here or somewhere there and and then we'll we'll go and fly along that and so what we'll do is we'll go uh filter transform puppy ray gpu <coughs> and um, at this point, I want to go fast, so I'm going to go to the medium quality initially and just start looking around. I need to change my position. So here's the position, here's the angle direction, the view look. Um, I'm going to go right here, kind of, or maybe inside the canyon. Yeah, let's go here. Let's go move in, something like this. And then also move down that's with the right button you can move uh, vertically and so now we can look this way uh, okay so now we have the canyon view we can basically fly through that canyon so um, I, I would go and uh, clear the uh, animation path or the keyframes if we had any from priors and then just set it to the first one and keyframe that right and then and let's say you want to do something really odd you want to have actually the terrain initially flat like uh, take the scale and scale it down to nothing so it's just flat and the terrain will grow out like this right that that would be an interesting little exercise so let's keyframe it to that and then after about a couple of 20 or 30 frames or so let's go and scale up uh, not move up scale up there you go and also move forward a little bit so let's go change the camera position to kind of move forward that's too much I don't want to go that much and also move the camera direction a little bit look to the right there you go keyframe that and then uh, perhaps we'll go a little bit further into this animation like so and this time we'll go forward and as you reach close to here we'll go up a little bit or down uh, and then also turn the head to the left so now we see all along this canyon and we can tilt also a little bit you know make it look like we are kind of in, a, in an airplane or on a helicopter and we're turning our angle and keyframe that and then so now we're gonna go start going really fast so the distance that you play here on that uh, scroll bar that is how many frames you're covering to go to the next position and so that will obviously affect also you know what the perceived speed is uh, when you play it back so let's say here we want to go into that canyon there and uh, rotate a little bit the other way now and so we go like this keyframe that and then at the very end I don't know what do we want to do maybe go land at the bottom there um, let's see let's go zoom in I mean move in rather and like so and there you go okay so we have keyframe that don't don't forget that and so now we have a little animation where we kind of have the terrain grow up and then we fly into that terrain and that's where the fun starts you know that's a very easy way to create sort of a canyon so now we need to render it now normally i would go to final render or if your system can take it even final final render make sure you save everything before you try that the first time because uh, it depends on how big the dimensions of the images and um 
uh, you know how fast your GPU is and so on so you don't want it to crash because it's just not able to handle it uh, make sure that you you've saved your elevation maps uh, at least and your color maps if you've developed any uh, but so what I'm going to do here is <coughs> I'm, I'm just going to go very fast. I'm going to keep it medium quality uh, just so we can see the rendering happen. And um, but I will enable anti-aliasing or not. No, let's let's go really just fast. Um, I'm going to set the animation to render at uh, medium quality and uh, global illumination. Uh, let's just use default. Okay. So now this will render really quickly because it's going through the GPU, but it's not doing the best in terms of the quality. It's a very quick render now. Um, it's not real time, but close enough, you know, just to get a really good impression. And sometimes this is really all you need because you may not really need to have it very crisp if in the end you're going to fly through that canyon so fast that you also add additional motion blur. And see, we're already done now, so we can see what that animation looks like. Let's make sure we play it back at 30 frames a second, which is what the final intended playback rate will be let's play it and so you see this goes really quick now there is a little bit of scintillation or a little bit of noise and that's because we rendered it at this uh, this uh, fast preview mode um, but what we can do now is perhaps take it further you know first of all save it of course you'll want to save it here you'll want to save it perhaps as an avi uh, always verify after you saved the avi always verify that it is playback capable that you can play it back uh, outside of dog waffle because some media players have difficulty if your dimensions like if you check here under image info if your dimensions are not uh, even numbers right if you had some odd numbers because you cropped it visually without checking the dimensions um, you might have some odd numbers and um, we can work with that but when you save it out to AVI depending on the codec that you choose you might not be able to uh, have uh, good ways to play it back afterwards so always check on that and um, so at this point what I'd like to do is just perhaps add a little bit of motion blur so I'm gonna go to the timeline editor and um, I want to kind of do something like uh, let's see some sort of effects like a zoom blur actually let's go where's my blurs there there's a zoom blur and there's a mystic vision let's do the zoom blur and with the zoom blur what I'll do is I kind of initially keep it at bay but then as I'm going faster I'm gonna start zooming it in so here we we'll, we don't do anything and then we all the way till about here We'll keep it in the center, you can position it around here, and then we'll gradually move it into where we're flying faster and faster. So initially, let's keyframe to this position, and then around here, we'll start adding some, some significant zoom blur and you know, keep the quality high, something like this, All right? And then here, some sort of uh, zoom vision. And there you go. So now render that or apply that. And this is going to, you know, it's going to give you this impression that you're, you're, you're getting some sort of a blurry vision of something uh, because you're flying so quickly through that, right? But uh, one thing you notice also is at that point, it really doesn't matter if you had that low resolution initially because <laughs> it's starting to disappear in that blur. So, I mean, this is a little bit extreme, but it's just to, to prove the point that, you know, sometimes you really don't need to spend the time rendering it at the very highest quality, uh, if, uh, especially if later on you're going to just lose it all to blurring or some other uh, effects, you know, make it motion blur, because you might use this just as a background. That's another thing, too. Let me undo and say uh, you want to actually have a, a spaceship, maybe a spacecraft, a helicopter, an airplane, a UFO, something like that, um, that's going to be in the foreground. And the uh, the terrain you see here, you may want to see that in the background and therefore out of uh, focus. So one thing you'll do is uh, you'll blur it, maybe with the Gaussian blur. And, uh, you know, if, for instance, you look here, um, this is without blur, and then you just add a little bit blur like so. And you just do that on the entire scene. So apply that over the entire scene, you now have it blurred. And it really didn't matter if it was rendered over an hour or over just a few seconds or minutes because uh, you're not going to see much difference there anymore now that it's all blurry. The idea is that, you know, the focus is not going to be on this terrain. This is just a little background information where the focus is going to be on some sort of, uh, sort of a spaceship that you're going to you're going to draw in front of it. Uh, and to finish that, I 
do we'll do just that uh, let me go to brush uh, I think I want to go to the animator brush and load an AVI or load uh, let's see an image sequence I have an I think I have an image sequence of a spaceship don't I what was it that I did the other day let's go see if we can find it again load sequence and that would be uh, probably a targa let's go select the folder and see if I can find it on this PC under my D drive capture the daily dose I think it was under Carrara and spinning astro oh yeah that was a spinning astronaut that was not well there's a spaceship here but I don't recall if I have that one in Targa no see I have it in uh, do I have it in Targa no maybe BMP no, see, I didn't save it as a BMP or target, so we, we can't load that one. Let's go instead, load the... What else do I have? Oh, there's an Osprey here somewhere. Oh, uh, let's see, RGBA. Uh, I don't know which one of these might work. Let's let's try one. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, there's, there's something here. Who knows? Maybe that will work. Let's just grab it and see what we can do with that. Um... Oh, I think this this is where the Osprey is kind of uh, lifting up into the air and then taking off to the right. So that that may not be exactly flying the way we want it. Right? We obviously need a, a spaceship that's going uh, in the direction that we're flying, or more or less. But let's just see here in a second after we've loaded that image sequence into the brush and see if we can actually use that. Coming up in a second. Oh, there's 240. 250 frames there, I didn't realize there was that many. Let's go and there you go. And so let's see the brush, store and manage a copy of it. Yeah, here it is. All right, so that would be uh, where, where you now take this <coughs> into the uh, <coughs> brush keyframer and um, put the, the Osprey, there it is, uh, put that in front of the uh, the animation but yeah it's not it's not pointing the right way it's pointing it's looking at us right but anyway it it, it, it brings the, the point across you know it shows uh, the idea that uh, you can uh, you, you will find scenarios where you really don't need the objects to be um, uh, the, the animation to be rendered at very highest resolution or highest quality because you might uh, you might end up doing all sorts of transforms like this <laughs> maybe something funny like do a full flip there and and then um, maybe move it over here a little bit you know all sorts of different reasons to actually show it uh, a little bit different there you go all right so we have a little animation let's go render that and there you go so this was an animation I did in Carrara a while back with that uh, um, with that chopper and um, it's uh, it's now rendering across each of the frames with that blurriness you really don't see the detail that the terrain had or didn't have it doesn't matter um, so anyway so that's that's a, a quick look at uh, some ideas on on how to get started with uh, using that terrain capability to then composite some some other things into it all right thanks for watching <laughs>